Let's finish this section of the diagnostic test, uh, the numbers operations definition section, with 21 to 29. 21, what is the eighth term of the sequence? So you could use the arithmetic sequence formula if you'd like, but there's really no need to. This one we can just brute force, right? We know by looking at the sequence that the, each term is going up by three from the previous term. So here's the first, here's the second, here's the third, here's the fourth. So the fifth will be 12, the sixth will be 15, the seventh will be 18, and the eighth, and the one we're looking for is 21. So that's your answer. John starts a project on Monday. He finishes it 125 days later. What day of the week does he finish? So this one is not really like, it's similar to 21 because it's essentially a sequence problem, but we don't want to brute force it because we don't have to write out 125 you know, letters, 125 days. But for this, we remember that it's a cyclical pattern in the, number, in the days of the week, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So really, the number, if there's the equal number of seven day units, right, the equal number of weeks is just going to cancel out. Really what we're left interested in is the, the remainder. So this is actually a remainder problem. So if we divide 125 by seven, what do we get? Well, this goes in once, seven, 55, and seven goes into 55 seven times, and seven times seven is 49, which leaves a remainder of six. So what does this mean? So all the other days, you know, from 1 to, I guess, 119 are all just weeks that cancel out, right? They return back to Monday all those times. So what we care about now is here's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We want to know what's six days after Monday because that's our remainder, right? That's what's where the, the pattern sits by the time we hit 125. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the answer is Sunday. Set, uh, which terms are common to both sets? So this is uh, basically a union question. Uh, we want to find the one that's common to both, and the only one that's common to both is 18. Cool Kid High School offers ice hockey and baseball. Out of 54 total students who play sports, 18 play ice hockey, and 6 play both ice hockey and baseball. How many students play baseball? So this is a sets question, but it's better handled with Venn diagrams. So let's go ahead and draw out our Venn diagrams. One, two. So here, this bubble is ice hockey. This bubble is baseball, and let's fill in our information. Well, they tell us that six play both ice hockey and baseball, so that's going to be our spot in here. They tell us that 18 play ice hockey, but remember, that's including the people who play both baseball and ice hockey and just ice hockey. So really, this whole bubble is 18. We really want to know what the people who play only ice hockey is, and that's going to be 12, right? Because 12 plus 6 is 18, and that's the total that play ice hockey and ice hockey and baseball. Uh, but 12 is just how many play just ice hockey. Now we want to know, okay, well, what about this piece right here, right? We want to know how many people just play baseball. Well, there's 54 total students, and we've accounted for 18. So 54 minus 18 leaves us with 36. So the number of people who only play baseball is 36. But we want to know how many people play baseball, period. So that includes the people who play both. So the answer is not just 36. It's 36 plus 6, which is 42. And that's your answer. Barney is making a sandwich. He has three choices of bread, four choices of meat, two choices of cheese, and six condiments. If you could only choose one bread, meat, cheese, and condiment, how many different kinds of sandwiches could he make? So this is a counting problem, right? We've got four decisions we have to make, so we draw four lines. Three choices of bread, uh, four choices of meat, two choices of cheese, six condiments. Once we have that down, we multiply these all out. We do that, we get, uh, let's see, 144, I think. Yeah which is our answer. Mary is the judge of a dancing contest. She has no idea what she's doing, so she decides to award the prizes randomly. How many different ways can she award first, second, and third place if there are five contestants? So another counting problem, but in this case, we want to know uh, basically where order matters. So we have three choices to make, right? We have uh, got to choose between first, second, and third. How many choices do we have for the first? Well, we've got five contestants, so we've got five there. How about for second place? Well, once we've chosen one for first, we're only going to have four left here which means we'll only have three left for third place. And now, as always, we multiply them, we do that, and we get 60 different ways. The ratio of wins to losses for the New York Rangers was five to two. If the Rangers played 63 games, how many losses did they have? Okay, this one is best solved with the handy dandy ratio box. Wins, losses, total. So the ratio is five to two. So the total was seven, five plus two is seven. 63 total games, so that goes down in this box down here, which is the actual real totals. What times 63, or what times 7 gives us 63? Well, that's 9, so the same multiplier must be true for all the pieces. 
So this is 45, this is 18, and there's your answer, 18. If you don't know the ratio box, check out the Math Bootcamp video on ratio boxes and the tactics videos on ratios. Uh, that should help clear up what I just did there. Given the statement, all of Caitlin's friends are singers, must the following be true? If Henrik is a singer, he is Caitlin's friend. Well, they're telling us that all of Caitlin's friends are singers, but it doesn't necessarily mean that all singers are Caitlin's friends, right? It just says that all of Caitlin's friends are singers, not the reverse necessarily have to be true. So if Henrik is a singer, I mean, he could be Caitlin's friend, but he doesn't have to be. Just because he's a singer doesn't make him automatically Caitlin's friend, right? The reverse of this, the converse, is not true. So this is not true. It's, we can just say no, we don't say false, because it could be true, but it doesn't have to be true, right? This is a must-be-true true question. A bookstore sells a certain book for $20. After its rival closes down, the bookstore raises this book's price to $30. What was the percent change? So our percent change problem, our formula is the new price minus the old over the old times 100. Or our new, doesn't have to be just a price, it could be any quantity. So here the new price is 30 minus 20 over 20 equals 100 or times 100. So this is going to be 10 over 20 times 100, which is just going to be 50%. Once we do all that math out. Uh, and don't worry if you get a negative here. We could have done 20 minus 30. It doesn't really matter. All we care about is it's a 50% increase. Increase of 